Hey everyone, DJ Anubis with you. <laughs> and DJ Neko headbanging to our uh, Nomas. It's our, our Nomas. Oh, you got the Nomas shirt on. Mine is just a Maryland Death Fest celebration shirt. Um, I didn't buy the yearly shirt. Usually I get the yearly shirt that has like all the bands and stuff on it, but I saw this one instead. And, um, you know, it's like a celebration of Maryland. I, I'm too short for the camera to see it. But it, oh, you can kind of see it. It says like Maryland Death Fest and it has the years that it's been going on. And I, I'm really into long sleeves and I'm really into like baseball tees. And I was like, oh, look, a long sleeve. And then I, I got that hypocrisy baseball tee. And I was like, you know what? I'm good for t-shirts. Unlike DJ Anubis, who anytime he sees a t-shirt and it's in his size and it's bad, he likes, he's like, I need another t-shirt yeah one half of his entire she, she's miss hoodie or baseball tees i'm just tees but this is the metal town radio podcast and we were doing another movie review we just got out from seeing the last voyage of the demeter or now, demeter it, so some people were pronouncing it demeter and some people are saying demeter Could i be demeter i well the captain was calling it the demeter right and i'm just thinking it's based on whatever your like your What's the right word? Like almost like your accent or with like location. From yeah, from, like yeah. the locale, like where you're from. It's... Tomato, tomato. Yeah, yeah, that, that. Potato, potato. Uh, directed by Andre Overdahl. The cast consists of Corey Hawkins, Aisling Francois. I, I probably pronounced that Francois. wrong. Liam Cunningham, who uh, is from Dog Soldiers, he plays the villain oh, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that. Uh, he's our captain, and da David Demers. Yeah. And then David Demalshan, who plays the the first hand man uh, from Dark Knight, Dune, the Suicide the, Squad. The he played cheap, Polka Dot Man. The chief mate. Yep, chief mate. Uh, he's he's also showed up in a lot of Shutter stuff. Like whenever they do like commentary on horror films, he's one of the guest guys that are there to talk about it. So he's a big horror fan. Oh, so this is perfect for him then. Yeah. So uh, those are a couple of guys. Liam and uh, David are like veterans of horror. But the plot is a crew sailing from Carpathia to England find that they are carrying a very dangerous cargo. Obviously, that, that. for those are who are more familiar with this, understand that it's a short chapter in the novel from Dracula. Uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Bram Stoker's Dracula. How he's getting to England. Yep. And um, I find they did a really good job of taking a short chapter of, oh, this is the last voyage of the Demeter. And, and, and now here we are in England. Like they just took it. And, and it's kind of like what they did with Rogue One and Star Wars, where they took like a little one-off yeah. and made it into like an entire story, an entire story. Because honestly, if you think about like in the world, as we live now, a hundred million things are going on at the same time. So if you're having a, pretend world and you're creating the dracula world and you know he's old old you know we know he's been around forever and you start thinking like okay well if he is you know in romania and had his castle there how did he make it all over you know europe and how like they I just loved how they took that part of the story and brought it to life because first off it's on a ship and I, I loved all the old ship stuff. Like, yeah, you and I are pretty impressed with the attention to detail mm -hmm. when it comes to like, even early on when they're first loading up from the docks, like there's a lot of workers trading and then like just what's going on with the scene. You're like, that's impressive. Like it, it looks, it doesn't look like, and it's not the knock pirates of the Caribbean, but, this was more detail oriented. And it looked, what it looked like, on. you know, grimy, like yeah. port, port towns yeah. have long been like really grimy. Um, and that's because it it's work, you know, you're, uh, you know, you're taking large cargo um, year after year, like some, some port towns are starting to get a little bit more, um, touristy because they are also not just having working ships but they're also having cruise ships um as well because there are some beautiful areas that are traditional port towns like in the bahamas and um curacao that are for trading and for work ships but 
you still you start seeing all the the cruise ships and the area around the port which always was kind of like the you know grimy area they've built it up more put more it just shop. looked very authentic like it was just really nice and uh but we we kind of get an, a feeling early on because you've got people on Carpathia they're they're delivering the cargo which is like 40 crates you know 50 crates 50 crates and of course uh when the Demeter arrives and docked they're looking for more crew so of course uh David Demetian who plays Wolchek he's kind of going through and trying to find three extra men to help along with he's the like, voyage I need, I need three able-bodied seamen and that's when we're kind of introduced to Hawkins who plays Clemens who has like a very intelligent background he, you know he's a black man uh something that comes up later in terms of like the adverse diver, uh, adversity he faces uh, both in his life and then on the ship itself. So, but he was he was you know a doctor. Yeah, doctor he had education. From Cambridge, yep. you know, uh, even had some. You know, well, there was a great point early on when uh, they're trying to find the three men, and he's there. He's fit. He's able. Uh, but Walchuk's like, well, you'd never had ship experience. He's like, well, neither did the people that you know did the zodiac, the mm -hmm. stars, the the maps that we used to navigate. Uh, which was a great point, but they still didn't give it to him. It wasn't until later that he ends up saving the son of Captain Elliot. That was, his, that was his grandson. Grandson, excuse me. And uh, that's when he gets the, the the extra spot. Of course, the guy that slipped up was like this one blind guy, but he got terrified when he saw the dragon emblem on the side of the He's crate. like, I know where this is coming from. Yeah, there's, you get like this ominous feeling from when the people that are bringing the craze are like, yeah, we're out of here, dude. You guys load this shit up yourself. We're gone. They said we have to leave before sundown. And they're yeah. like, what? Yeah, they they not playing around. And then the crazy thing was you saw the um the Romanians that were bringing the cargo down. It was, they handed like a big sack of gold to Wolchek. Yeah. Wolchek and he's like, this is more money than they paid to get it here. Than they paid to get it here. What? Like they were just shocked that they. And I guess it was more like a for off of their conscience. Yeah. You know, if they're lucky to make it, they'll have all this gold. Yeah, I kind of got the feeling that one, yeah, we'll give you the money plus some back just so we can get the hell out of it. But two, you're taking whatever this is out of here because we know that this is not good stuff. Mm -hmm. Like we just we want this thing out of here. So they already know that there's some bad shit. They're wishing them good luck. Like hope you make it to the end of your voyage. Yeah, but also like I think it is also because they're very superstitious too but they're also like trying to have a little bit of like the guilt taken off of them because they know what's going to happen yeah. they, they know they're like we know what that is and we know what's going to happen so if they're lucky enough to make it through here's a little extra and it's a little bit off of their conscience too yeah now i don't want us to start giving too many details away because it's it's a great it's a great story yeah, so here's just a quick picture of uh, Cunningham as Captain Elliot, which, you know, I really enjoyed a lot. And then, of course, here's Hawkins and Aisling, who plays Anna. Now, um, of course, the voyage itself, you know, you start finding out slowly as people start kind of disappearing and everything. But Anna is actually one they find inside one of the crates like she the crate falls from the ship yeah like, they had the, the ship took a roll and then all the cargo kind of like collapsed and her crate was open and she was inside this the dirt crate with dirt and so hawkins finds her and he's like she he sees that she's almost dead because of the anemic you know he doesn't really understand but he's he knows he that she needs a transfusion with, yeah, he's like she needs a transfusion she's got an infection we have to get her fresh blood right so you're already kind of like oh boy you know, you know, we're trying to figure out what her purpose is. We kind of figured it out pretty fast. She was just like a snack at that point, really. But he manages to kind of prolong, uh, you know, obviously dealing with vampirism and stuff like that. You don't really have the answer, but he doesn't know what it is. He's, right. He's, he's just trying to save her life. You yeah, know, that's all he's, he's doing. Scientifically, and that was the one thing I, I, I loved about Hawkins was he's like very scientific mathematics he's like i and then he he said he wants to figure out how, he wants the world to make sense right but this whole voyage really made him see that the world will never make sense but the captain was very prolific and he's like maybe the world isn't meant to make sense right and you're just supposed to be around to enjoy it and around for the ride and you see a lot of the usual 
superstitions that arise from this like really early on after they find the girl it's like automatically like, oh there's a woman on board we got to get her yeah, out of here yeah they're kind of like let's just dump her man <laughs> like you know we don't we'll want do with all stowaways not that it would have prevented anything coming but the fact is it's that superstition about women on, on ships back then and so that's something that's kind of lasted over the years in terms of the history and the myth behind it um I, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has like a 74% audience rating to like a 52% critic. So I don't, I haven't read any critical reviews or even pro, uh, audience reviews of this, but uh, I can't really see why they don't like the film. I mean, we'll give our ratings later, but if it has anything to do with Dracula himself, like to me, that looks like what a vampire would like in terms of Nosferatu, which was something I was kind of especially looking. like when you start understanding the mythos of um Dracula and you see if you've ever seen Bram Stoker's Dracula where it's like he can come to you as a mist and yeah. that's the part like what we're talking about. This is before he gets to England and then he gets to England and all this stuff happens. Apparently he is not strong enough in Romania because he doesn't have enough people to eat. Yeah. And they had made a pact with, he had made a pact with the remaining people that were there. Like they would give people occasionally and he promised not to wipe them out. Yeah. Kind of like a sacrifice. That's, that's where Anna came from. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that, if you follow that type of vampire belief, he doesn't have the ability to control the way he looks and acts because he doesn't have his full power. Yeah. When he gets more people and gets more blood, that's when he can appear as a mist. He can shape shift and change and look more human. But right now, you know, he hasn't eaten very well in hundreds of years and he only has had like a couple of full people he gets you, you see him he looks more like a demon than actual you know dracula that we're used to seeing um yeah we don't really know like we figure from the the novel that because there is like the very end we he's in england of course and we 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 see like there's a moment because we see his cane that's something that's very notable in dracula's story so He's obviously mingling with people, but he's still not quite human. He's so. still not quite. He still kind of has that Nosferatu, like, craggy yeah. nose and the pointy But we ears. don't ever know if he ever actually ends up. Because he still had the hat and he, like, kind of had the jacket up, but he. We can only assume he does because of his later part of the story. So So we, this is, like, a middle chapter. Yeah. In Bram Stoker's Dracula. And we've seen the other part of Bram Stoker's. Bram Stoker's Dracula, just from even if you've just seen the movie, it's pretty true to book. It's right. it's not like it it doesn't get to uh, take too many liberties, so to speak. Um, now there was one sort of funny moment, not so funny. We, we were kind of giggling to ourselves because the cook was this like Asian man who was. I think he was Filipino. Was he Filipino? He was Asian, but like I the reason. Regardless, I he was a Christian. He was like the only Christian on board, but we were kind of joking because he was one of the ones that got on the lifeboat to try to escape and leave everyone else behind. I'm like, well, that's still Christian of you, you know? <laughs> and uh, of course he got his karma, but um, the only thing that I found interesting, and we, because if you're familiar with the story, you already know he's, it's not going to go well for people. It's just not. Um, so obviously the final night that they're on the ship is when all hell breaks loose and it's pretty much all bets are off. They're trying and, and they're trying to figure out how they're gonna kill it, but they kind of learn things up until that point because of what happens to other crew members and of course the young boy. Um so to me, in my mind, is like, well, they probably could have because they all plan on getting on a lifeboat and then ex exiting anyway and letting the ship sink, but I'm like, dude, you should have did that during the daylight and then just set that shit on fire and then all all have been good. But I think I, they were concerned because of the distance they hadn't seen the land yet. And it, I don't care, dude. I'd be like, get me the lifeboat. Well, it's, it's daytime. It's really hard if you are not close to land because you could easily be thinking you're going towards land 
and you're going further away from well, land. Well, didn't they? But didn't they have like smaller compasses at the time? They might, but they may not have one with them. I mean, I don't know. Uh, to me, I'd take that chance over like what was actually being dealt with. They knew that he wasn't coming out during the day, so they knew he was a nighttime guy. Um, and then they saw some other effects of like, oh, okay, this does that. All right, that's cool. Uh, but of course, this is just how the story's told. This is how Dracula gets to uh, England. So we just we know that we know he has to make it. Yeah, I mean, we just know it's gonna it's gonna go that it's way. Just, it's same thing like with Rogue One. But I always you like know what I, happens in Rogue One. I always like to challenge the logic. I'm like, you guys, you're missing the whole picture here. Uh, but anyway, but I mean, it is again. We have to take it for when it was written, mm -hmm. and we have to take it for like. Well, if you're going to make a story, you just you got to kind of overlook some things, and that, and then it, true, you know, no one knows what he is. They think he's just a demon. They don't have, they really don't even speak about vampirism at all. No, no, and they only say his name one time. Yeah, they they don't know what it is. They they call it the devil. They call it a beast. They they think um, they when they finally see it, they just are shocked. Like they don't know what's going on. Now, like she said, you know, we're not going to give a whole lot away. The movie just came out. But uh, one thing that stood out to me in this movie, right? And me. Huh? Yes. <laughs> uh, you have a person of color who's your lead in Corey Hawkins. And then you have the, the young woman, Anna, uh, Aisling uh, Ramchois, or whatever her last name. Sorry, girl, if I mispronounce your name. But both are great characters. And... I hate to, we hate to bring up the whole like wogism or whatever, but the reality is if you're going to do a film with strong characters like this, this is how you do it. Yeah, you don't have to. There like, was no, there was entire... no special narratives, no agendas. Both characters were great. And believable. Yeah. And, and yeah, because these characters, all of them, you, you really cared about. And I thought the story was good. Mm -hmm. Like the, the characters had good depth. You weren't going to get like a three hour long epic out of this, but. They did enough to give you enough care about like there was a moment between the captain and his first mate where the He's captain's turning. like, I'm gonna retire, so you're gonna have this ship. And that was kind of a big moment for Walljack because you know, he's always loved that ship too. He's always been with that. He captain. called it it was my home. Yeah. And what I also found really interesting too, as we were reading the credits, you could tell that, you know, they were really trying to have like because there was a Ru a Russian dude, a Polish dude, I believe. Um they were really trying to be true to and and hire like the one guy who was Petrovsky. I was like looking through the the credits and I was like, he's definitely, you know, I think he's Russian, like yeah. looking at his last name. So maybe I I get when people are saying, Oh, you should definitely, if it's if it's a person of, you know, whatever ancestral, you should try to like hire them. Well, that's what they did in this. They really went and found like the best actors of their, you know ethnicities and it worked out great they were i mean they all looked the part they all looked like you know awesome sailors i i i loved the ship it's so much detail it's so good it was just and i i really and i don't know where i can find it probably on youtube but i want to see if there's like a behind the scenes so they can show like what they did if they, if the they, well, design. whenever it comes on Blu-ray, that'd be something that might be on there. It'd be kind of cool. Check out the bonus features. The bonus features, but yeah, uh, you know, the characters are well written in this. This and this is the greatest thing about it is that it's it's it's, it's entertaining. It's not. It doesn't have the agenda above anything else. In fact, I don't think they even thought about the agenda. I think they just had strong leads, uh, black character, strong female lead, and it's like. That's like how you write a good story. Everybody like. was who they were meant to be. Like every character was yeah. cast perfectly. Um, it is rated R, but there's there's good gore in this. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's there's a lot of blood. Yeah, they didn't they didn't go cheap on the effects with the lots of blood. So, but yeah, it, didn't get out of hand. But it's but, not gross, right? Like there's been a few movies that we've watched, and it takes a lot to gross me out. Actually. It's there's a couple of small things that gross me out, like roaches. They gross me out, and we were watching Naked Lunch, and I'm like, can't watch this. And uh, then the gore is not so much that it a takes you out of the movie, or b makes it gross. Like 
I know um, some people find the fly a little gross. Oh, the remake is gory. It's yeah. Just gross as shit. Because, yeah, we, we, we've talked about that on Samurai Time when we did that. But but this is just right. Like, yeah. This is the. Sin, the, the yeah, it wasn't out of control. It's just it's right. Perfect. Yeah. It, it looks like somebody was attacked by some by a vampire. Yeah. So, uh, what was your rating of this? I'm going to say I will give it an eight. I really liked it. It's a horror movie. And also because I really love Dracula, like Bram Stoker's Dracula too. And it feels like it just kind of belongs with it. Like if you look at the clothes and stuff, mm -hmm. it looks like they kind of looked at that movie. And that's from the 90s, right? Her 92, yeah. Yeah. So that movie and this kind of looks like it could be in the same time period. Like it's in the same. Um, it's not like something. It is a good score, clearly. But it's not like my 10 movie. Which, yeah, you, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this makes my top ten by the year it's only because it wasn't a very good year for movies. Like, I mean, I too, I also give it an eight. I think it's a very decent it's film. Good, and I will watch it again. Um, so while most audiences are around seventy five, which I consider like a C, we're around the B range, which I think is fair. Oh, I think it's a fair yeah. movie. Um, don't know if I would own this, but then again, like Neko said, oh, I think I would own it. If they end up doing some features where they actually have some behind the scenes stuff, then I would definitely. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm definitely going to own this, or we will eventually, especially. And there you have it. She's giving you the answer for me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I told him, and I, I I just made all these like little ship comments because I worked on a modern ship, and they had made that they made a comment because this was 1897, right or 96, some but this was still a wooden ship and they even made a comment about like, she's a good ship. Um, but like these, these new, these new metal ships, like it's just that kind of turnover from the old ship to the new ship kind of thing. And when you see like how they really created the ship that the, the scenery itself really, that alone is giving me the eight besides a cool story that I love. And that it was a perfectly executed cool story that I love. But just imagine like the small details, like there is no electricity on this ship. Mm -mm. All lamps. It's all lamps. So when they have their ship lights on, it's just hanging lamps. Um, they have livestock and there's this thing with like sailors where they get a pig and a rooster tattooed on their feet because after shipwrecks like usually you see the livestock crates floating and they survive the shipwrecks um they have livestock because they need to eat there yeah. are no refrigerators back right. then so you saw like there's you know there's a lamb and a goat and chicken and pigs and you know guess what today we're having ham so the uh <laughs> the cook's gonna go down and slaughter the pig and make a delicious pig yeah um Things like that really made kept me in the movie because you could easily have ignored the whole livestock thing, or you could have easily ignored like, oh, they they just show them lighting the lamps, they show them ringing the bell, like the bell when you have a you know. Problem. Yeah, one of the cool things about the the communication on the ship was the knocks, so mm -hmm. they would knock and it would echo through the because ship. it's wooden, the the metal. It doesn't really do that. Right. Um, and that for me is whoever made this or wrote this or helped with this, there were people who knew, like, you know, you saw like the giant wheel, you saw how like when they would adjust, you saw the sails changing and how it that is a big deal. You could easily ignore all of that and still have the same movie, but these small things that took minor seconds in the movie created the the atmosphere if that makes sense mm -hmm. i know I'm, I'm just gushing over the ship <laughs> but it's also interesting too because there are still some of these old wooden tall ships that's what we call them um around they're not like in use and they don't sail around the world they're more like preserved and they'll do short little you know junkets so that they're they're to, like museums floating museums and um 
which is very interesting to see. Well, I will say this. Okay. So there was three writers. Obviously, Stoker's one of them just because it's his story. But the other two um, are Broggy F. Shoot and then Zach Alkowitz. Now, Broggy don't really see anything that I recognize as far as like he did write was a writer on escape room, which I never saw, but Zach, he produced on lights out <laughs> and, but he wrote for bullet train, which I enjoyed. And then fear street part two, which we watched that trilogy, which he was very good in. So he also did this along with, he did the screenplay for the other two. So it's so really interesting how they have some people who are horror influenced. Yeah. Take and put more because there there's suspense in there. Not it's not just gore. It's it's almost like a mystery uh -huh. because you don't know. They don't know what's going on. We know because we know what happens. But it's a mystery, and the the characters portrayed it so well. Yeah. So anyway, if you enjoyed this review or you saw it and had any comments, please let us know your thoughts on it and. Hit the like button for us and subscribe and support the channel. We appreciate all the support as usual. And uh, we'll have some more stuff coming up. I know next Friday we're going to have an interview with uh, Christopher Alexander, who directed Parasite Lady. And uh, we'll be uh, talking with him a little bit. And then we'll also be having an unboxing soon. So you'll be seeing that up on our channel as well. So thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And keep it metal.